Hello and welcome to Please Get Me Started. I'm Nigel Habersham and this week we have a very special guest, the one, the only, Bruce Springsteen. Now let's see if I can get the boss started. Bruce, hello and welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks, it's great to be here. And thank you for hosting Please Get Me Started here at your beautiful ranch in Colts Neck, New Jersey. It's fantastic. It's fantastically hot. It's no problem. It's easier for me. <laughs> but it's bloody hot here, is it not? And you, you, you're wearing a, a leather jacket. How do you manage that in this sort of humidity? Well, you know, Nigel, it's more important to be cool than, than to be comfortable. And it's a very loud and squeaky thing as well, that jacket. I suppose <laughs> we will have to fix that in post. Um, anyway, uh, so, the boss. Why do they call you the boss? That's one of my least favorite questions. Um, you know, I don't know, I guess it comes from, from when I, I would pay the boys after the show. They call me boss. Uh, I'm not sure how big a fan I am of that, uh, of that moniker. <laughs> understood, understood. But certainly being called the boss is preferable to being called a fascist pig or, or something more obscene or profane. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. What about New Jersey? Bruce Springsteen and New Jersey are inseparable. It would be a bit like if I were inseparable from, from Croydon. Um, do you ever wish you were from somewhere else? No, not at all, Nigel. You know, uh, it's no accident that I'm a lifelong citizen of the Garden State. Um, I guess I find the people to be unwaveringly real, um, and their their rawness belies a, a certain irrefutable solidity. Yeah. Nice. So, why the album titles uh, Nebraska uh, or Western Skies? Uh, is that meant to be Western New Jersey, perhaps the Cinnaminson area? Well, my first record was called Greetings from Asbury Park which is a little town on the on the Jersey Shore. But uh, since those humble beginnings, I've, I've been to other places besides New Jersey. <laughs> um, I've been fortunate to, to travel the world. And uh, the places I go, the people I meet, they all inform my work in, in various ways uh, and on, uh, on uh, multiple levels. So uh, I've endeavored to be more to my fans, more, more to myself, than just a, uh, just a one-trick pony. A one-trick stone pony, I assume you mean? <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Now, some critics have observed that over time your work has become increasingly political, and some of your fans have felt that the music uh, hasn't been any fun for a long time. Excuse me. Uh, that instead it has become unbearably laden with uh, political messaging. Now, what do you say to that? Well, I've been profoundly blessed uh, by fans who overwhelmingly have been willing to travel with me on this artistic journey, uh, no matter where it went. But um, I would say that my music has always been political, um, maybe just from shifting perspectives. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, the politics were very personal. It was, I, I don't have any money, I need, I need more money, I need to get out of here. Um, as an adult, with albums like, uh, like The Ghost of Tom Joad, it's more... Ouch, that is a hard album to get through. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's brooding. It's, it's like a dirge. <laughs> right, but the, the perspective there is more expansive more grandiose. I suppose I shifted uh, to a more global intergenerational exploration of, of negatively impacted populations uh, distributed through, um, through time and space. Right, so, so after these, these shifts, as you call them, uh, and the songs are becoming more nakedly political and, and ponderous, uh, what happens to Wild Billy. Where is Sherry Darling? Will we ever see or hear from the spirits in the night again? Well, they're still there. They're still alive. Uh, you know, those songs still carry substantial meaning for the people who love them. 
and therefore they remain powerful and essential uh, to me. That's nice. Now tell me, what's ever happened to that, that cute little tart you used to go out with, the, uh, the television actress? <laughs> you mean Julianne, yeah. Uh, she's, a, she's a great person. Um, we, <laughs> we split up a while ago, you know. Uh, I guess you could, uh, you could call it a starter marriage. <laughs> I remember thinking that she was a bit of all right. Yep, yep, yep. Well, yeah. <laughs> but in the end, you wound up with a tried and true Jersey girl, the real, the real McCoy. What exit is she? Yeah, Patty. Well, she's a phenomenal partner. Uh, it'd be impossible for me to overstate the role she's played in my, my professional and my personal evolution over the last 30 years. Yeah. The same could be said of my wife. Only it's all negative. And then she left me for a librarian. But speaking of negative, um, we seem to have arrived at a moment here uh, in history that is particularly negative um, here in the United States and beyond um, as the voice of multiple generations and a frequent commentator on life in, in America. Um, what do you make of it? That's a hard one. Um... But, uh, but look, I, I think the infrastructure of modern consumer society is, uh, is deteriorating under, under the weight of America's dark past. Um, and we, uh, as a people, as a nation, um, we failed to address the, the systemic uh, dysfunctionalities uh, upon which our institutions of government are... Um, so uh, precariously balanced, yeah. Right, so what is the fix? Is it Born in the USA Part 2? Well, I don't know if that'll do it, Nigel. <laughs> um, but, uh, but look, you know, uh, we're at crossroads, um, and a crossroads represents an opportunity. Um, you know, uh, epistemologically speaking, as despair and inequality become uh, generationally entrenched. Uh, the abstruse nature of the military-industrial complex uh, is exposed, you know, and uh, as such, it necessarily juxtaposes uh, two asymmetrical poles in, in, um, in such a way that uh, in order to distill a uh, a transformative, you know, not not a performative, not a reactive, but a transformative um, subdural phenomenon uh, from the, the aforementioned uh, opportunity. Um, a conflagration of societal individuals, you know, has to has to discard any illusions of apoliticality uh, and confront um, ipso facto uh, the the gargantuan minutia of working class realities, you know. Okay, okay, Bruce. Um, so, uh, anything else you want to add? Uh, well, well, let's, uh, let's see. Um, uh, elemental, uh, machinations, uh, egregious, uh, orchestrate, constituency and uh, obverse <laughs> well there you have it folks dynamites in the belfry playing with the bats that's all we have time for on this episode of please get me started we were lucky enough to have the legendary Bruce Springsteen here thank you Bruce for for having us conundrum <laughs> Right, we will see you next week for another episode of Please Get Me Started. I'm Nigel Habersham.